Welcome to One School, One Planet podcast, episode 11. Continuing our conversations on the fertile edges of permaculture, ecology, and education. This episode is really built up around recordings that we made in the field while working with students at Llanvallen High School last week. We went down to Caibodfach Community Orchard to do some scything exercises, learn how to use handheld scythes um, to harvest weeds and grass, and we also planted a fruit tree guild in the high school, which will serve as a sort of exemplar of how permaculture works, that can be used by staff and students at the school as a teaching resource to learn about how ecosystems function and the benefits of sort of cooperative um, communal um, approaches to the world. So, without any further ado, here we go. The way that we think is we think in very individual ways. We think about ourselves, our personal needs and what have you. That's not the way that plants work. Plants grow in teams, they grow in guilds and families. Um, and I always, the analogy that I always give is like the football team, it's kind of topical, um, which is that in a football team, if everybody wants to be the goalkeeper, they wouldn't make a great team. It, it, everybody's got to play a different role. And plants are no different. And this is one of the major things that we kind of get wrong in agricultural farming is we do monocultures, we grow one, a lot of one plant. We just think, well, I want turnips, I want potatoes. Actually, in nature and in natural systems, that would never happen. You always get a mixed system of what we call a polyculture, the opposite of a monoculture. You have lots of different plants growing together. So here's our fruit tree, in this case it's a pear tree, and you can see that the roots of the tree mainly go sideways. Trees mainly feed quite close to the surface. People always think about trees having really deep roots, and that's not always the case. They have tap roots and anchor roots, which access water and hold given stability, but they mainly feed very close to the surface. And fruit trees are quite heavy feeders, they need quite a lot of you know, energy to produce all the fruit and everything that they need to do. And the first thing to know about trees and tree guilds is that trees and grass totally compete with each other. Grass is like a soil that's dominated by bacteria. It's mainly a bacterially bacterial community. Whereas trees like soils that are dominated by fungi. And you get lots of fungi in soils that are high in carbon, as dead, dead organic matter. So to establish trees in pasture, what we do is we put dead organic matter on the ground, like straw and cow manure and, and anything, dead old sticks, wood chip, anything like that. Rotten wood chips are actually the best stuff, because um, that changes the microbial life in the soil slightly. But you'll also notice that there's some tree, some plants in this guild which are very deep rooted and, and have roots which, are, which feed much lower down than the tree. And so this is all part of the teamwork, right? This is how plants work together. Is some feed close to the surface, some bring up nutrients from deep, deep down, bring them to the surface. So these nutrients that are being mined from deep, deep down, being brought up to the surface by this, this is an asparagus plant. And as it lives and dies, it's returning nutrients to the surface, which feed the surface of the soil. So it's like a big cycle. So for that reason, you don't need to plough or turn the soil to keep the nutrients in the topsoil. Most of the soil life is in the, in the top few inches of the soil, so that's, that's where you want the nutrients to be. And actually these deep-rooted plants are bringing those nutrients to the surface and releasing them there. They're also bringing out water and humidity and changing the environment around the tree. So, 
What other relationships might they have between each other? This bringing up nutrients, so the other ways that they might have a relationship. And think about that pollination. When we are planting fruit trees is, we want to plant other flowering plants that brings in insects and brings in birds. Insects will come in because they'll help pollinate flowers, obviously, and, and, and you get means you get more fruit. Birds come in, eat the insects, they also cycle phosphate. And phosphate is how what, what makes roots develop. So what we've, what we've learned is that you can add plants into a mix. There are certain plants which fix nitrogen, right? Legumes, the leguminous plants. Nitrogen gives the plants the, the tree the energy to grow. There are other plants which will accumulate um, phosphate, uh, sorry, uh, uh, potassium, potash, which is comfrey, um, which we've brought to add. And then the, um, the fruiting plants help cycle um, phosphates. You don't need fertilizers. If you have mixes of, if you do monocultures, you need fertilizers, because you'll, you'll pull all the nutrients out of the ground. And then you're caught into the cycle of having to feed the soil all the time. But if you go back to what nature does, because nature did this for billions of years without fertilizers, without any external inputs, is what they realize is different plants contribute in different ways. And between them, they create and manage the environment that the plant needs and make the nutrients be constantly available. So this is what we're this is what we're going to do, we're going to plant a really small plant guild in the school, but for the purposes of introducing people to that idea, just subtly in the background, but it's there to talk about and to learn from and to watch it develop. So, can you explain what it is that we're doing here? Digging a hole. What for? <laughs> for plants to go in from... That site. Which here. plant is it? I don't know. I don't a know what kind one. of plant it is either. Flowers. A big plant. Yeah. No idea a what it is. A big white called. plant. It's just a decorative plant. It's like the same one over there. Yeah. So we want to move it so that oh. we can put in a tree guild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And then the other stuff that's in there we're going to need to take out and we could break that up for the mulch stuff. That's it. It's like carbon. Yeah, because we don't need the rest of it. Mm hmm. You can see the earth here is really compacted because of all, all the students over years and years and years walking over it. Yeah. They weren't supposed to. There was a time where it was like all closed up and yeah. people couldn't walk on it. And then they broke down. There was like a thing along here. They broke that down and just carried on walking over it. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Do you want to tell me what you're doing? Um, I just cutting some grass and learning how to use a smaller sickle than the one we just used before. Yeah. Or scythe, whichever one's called. Is there a difference? Um, I think just the sickle's smaller. Yeah. Yeah, like that one over there. Yeah. So why why are you cutting down the grass? Because to act as a sort of organic fertilizer, kind of to encourage plant growth. Yeah, that's and then it. once the plants grow, you get all the other animals and insects to form in the little ecosystem. Perfect. Right? Thank you very much. Okay. What's going on? Um, we're trying to cut down weeds to practice doing it for the actual thing. Yeah. Yeah. Why is weeds a mean word? Um, because it's offensive. <laughs> to who? The weeds. <laughs> yeah. What is the purpose of cutting down all of these weeds? So you can put them by the trees so that grass doesn't take up the nutrients in the trees. Okay, yeah. So it's kind of like a, a mulch? Yeah. yeah. It looks like there's actually some berries in there. Hello, Jack. Hello. Thank you. Welcome to the herb garden. Have you got any burning questions for these three people? I'd like to introduce... Kerry. And... Sophie. And Scott. Thank Hello. you. Yeah. And uh, we've been hard at work in the, uh, in the, in the garden behind us, taking a break and a drink of water. Mm -hmm. Busy water. Thank you. And, um, and uh, I wonder whether they could explain to uh, you, Jack, just exactly what they've been doing and why they've been doing it. Yeah. Let's go with Scott first. We've been cutting down the overgrown grass around the trees. Mm -hmm. 
and then we've been using the grass that we got from the trees or around the trees to place next to the trees again but whilst it's cut it will die over time and then you can use that as a natural fertilizer for the trees to help them grow. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what it feels like to come and do work in the orchard. I mean obviously it's different to working in the classroom but can you explain why it's different? Um, just we're more involved. Yeah? Um, yeah. Feels good to know that we're doing something to help the community. That's good. Yeah. How is it helping the community? By creating an orchard which will continue to grow over years and years and will continue to support the land in this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we are year 10 Welsh Baccalaureate class, is that right? Yeah. yeah. So well, what... 10, what? Mm. 20. Okay. <laughs> what is the Welsh Baccalaureate? Um, it's a form of qualification, I guess. Except by the Welsh Government. Yeah. Uh -huh. What makes it different to like doing an A-level or a GCSE or something? But it is a GSC, is it? Is it a GCSE? Yeah. It is a GCSE. And now it's um, compulsory level as well, I think, for, at least for Slamath yeah. than it is. I think it's kind of a direction they want to push education into, which is more... To try, I don't know, is it, what is it? It's just trying to, to get people to think for themselves a little bit. Use and it to yeah. prepare us for, like, when it's we're like yeah. all different units. Yeah, it yeah. thinks it's more like preparing Preparation for... Preparation for the real world. Yeah, for leaving school. How does it do that? What does it do to, to prepare you for leaving school? Sort of. And it's, um, there's a lot of university practice stuff that they do, if you want to go down that route. Yeah, okay, so yeah, it's a bit more self-directed learning and, and independent thinking and stuff, rather yeah. than just rote learning. It's a it? lot more projects and like, individual pieces of work. Okay. And a lot more group working as well mm. than in another subject. Okay. Do you prefer doing projects to, like, exams, for example? Yeah. 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 Because then if you're having like an off day, it won't affect it too much. But if you have an off day on an exam day, then yeah. Yeah. And obviously it also gives you the chance to come out into the, you know, into the field, into the countryside. And yeah, it's less stressful. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's nice to work in small groups, often. I don't know. Mm. Usually work better in small groups as well, because then you're not like stressed out with all the stuff, but then you're also not stressed out because nobody else is doing anything. And you're not fighting to get your voice yeah. heard over twenty other people. At least with people. small groups, you've got like more control of what's happening. You all like do the same amount of work. Yeah. Yeah. And then jobs get done faster than if you're doing it on your own. Mm. So overall, after yesterday and today. What do you think are the main kind of key points that you can take away from what we've been doing? The stuff you've done with us. Water soil before trying to plant stuff. <laughs> yeah. Repair holes before you put stuff in them. It's good to know how to dig a hole. It is. Yeah. Pickaxes are heavy. Yeah. Plants <laughs> are smarter than anything. Uh, Plants are smarter than anything. Yeah, Corns are pretty defensive. Yeah, calling stuff we yeah, have It's watering our plants, so if you haven't watered yet, we need to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we need this water. Yeah. Good. Can you explain your design? It's a tree. Yeah? <laughs> no, it's a fruit tree because it has the tree. Yeah, we're going to do all the herbs around the outside. We haven't drawn them yet. Though. Yeah. Oh, lovely. How are you going to emphasise the relationships between the plants in the guild? Write a short paragraph by each one. Okay. We've got one there, one there, one there, one there, and one there. Great. So we've got quite a lot of space to write about them. Cool. Mm. Well, cool. Can you explain your design? Um, design is for the herb garden is situated over there mm -hmm. and um because Wales used to be rich in all herbs yep. and all of that's gone due to modern farming so I've just put in a nice fact here yep. to say dramatic fact that most of them are gone we need to 
keep what we have. Yep. And then the rest it just goes into what a little bit about what the herb garden can do. Mm -hmm. It's a little ending sentence at the bottom. What does it say? Together to create an ecosystem that will serve and feed. Lovely. Thank you. I wanted to kind of say, wow, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I was on Friday evening, I was just sort of relaxing at home and just reflecting on those two days at the school. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, actually, I've achieved a personal ambition that, that I'd had in my mind since about 2008, which is I wanted to teach scything in school. Yeah, it's not something that you usually see in schools, is it? No, and on many levels. One, because it's like a, you've got a huge rapier sharp 18 inch blade or whatever it is. Yeah. Which is kind of, you know, in a health dangerous. <laughs> and and working with the children of farmers mm -hmm. uh, who are, you know, idolised the, the John Deere, whatever, yeah. Matthew Ferguson, huge. A few comments about strimmers and how yes. it'd be easier to use strimmers and all that. These are the debates we need to be having, you yeah. know. It's it's it was great. It was great. And we were harvesting nettles and explaining the value of them and mm -hmm. carbon capture and using them to, you know, change soil microbiology. Yeah. And then once we'd done the practical like training session at the school we went down to the orchard, actually trimmed back some of the grasses and then laid them around a tree. And as you were saying in the mm. discussion, trying to change the kind of the way the soil is composed, isn't it? To bring a more fungus rich it, soil. So it literally changes the microbial balance of the soil. And what a lot of ecologists are saying is if you want to change community, you have to change the soil. Mm. The theme for last week's work, as we did our talk in the Cross Keys, yeah. was small and slow solutions, promoting small and slow solutions, and the idea of it doesn't matter what scale you're working at, mm -hmm. what matters is that it works. Yeah. And that you correct, work with the feedback that you get to make adjustments and allow it to grow. Yeah. And if you create a model that works and is growing, people will copy you and it will replicate. Yeah. So we have different examples of scale in the work that we were doing. We've got the small tree guild at the school, at the school which itself. is like an example to show people how tree guilds work. And then they can go down to the orchard and see how this can be scaled up into a forest system and then others can take that, work with it in their own schools and their own communities. And I think really that's what's going to be the aim of the third year of our project, isn't it? To try and scale out these ideas. And, and try and replicate them, get, mm. get, get, create other nodes of, of... You know, when you write the project bid at the beginning and you sit and you kind of imagine how it's going to go year one, year two, year three, I mean, you're guessing. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're anticipating, you don't know how it actually it's going to be which is the same with any design, is when you, as soon as you actually start to action it and you interact with reality, is it has to change in all sorts of ways to fit you know, the, the, the vagaries of reality. So we've had head teacher changes, we've had a series of three different head teachers in the time that we've been there. Mm -hmm. In fact, four, if we go back to the original consultation. So there's been enormous changes at the school. And, and with all the priorities they have within education to fit in, how we've actually managed to fit in around the, the existing timetable commitments is it's none of it's actually easy no and maybe what we've achieved isn't is on a slightly lesser scale than what we in, in originally initiated you know in, envisaged mm -hmm. but actually we've really done it yeah we've actually fulfilled the objectives that we've set for our sort of year two to get to the to the project i kind of feel like we've actually done it we've written the book about the project so far how yep. we've done it we've done we've created but quite finished but we've written our teaching pack mm -hmm. which is well on its way to being finished yep. and we explored the first six principles in class with the welsh baccalaureate group and yep. we've, we've done work with the land based studies students as well and then we followed that through with a conclusion with the second half of, of working with actually with design and making changes and physical changes in the school and working with the same groups of kids mm -hmm. so we've been able to sort of complete the whole complete the circuit complete the circuit yeah. so it's actually it's, it's quite satisfying we're sat here in the office today at one school one planet hq hq and one of the jobs we're doing is shaping the job description mm -hmm. for a third post we've had some help in the first stage of the project with the sort of setting up the admin and getting the shape of the project together and what's left of that now we want to sort of deploy for year three as an education worker or someone's going to help us take the ideas that we've established here and, and kind of roll them out and find ways to try and replicate them yeah. 
build up a network with other organisations, different schools, different colleges, and roll it out. Yeah, see how we can we can take this to the next level. Mm. You know, it's an interesting kind of almost kind of watershed point for the project. Actually, we've yeah. kind of done the first sort of big phase, which is building relationship with the school, build relationship with the community, work at how we're going to engage with them, and then actually deliver on that and, and create the teaching resources. And we've we've got this beautiful real physical thing that we've created in the Kai Bodvac garden itself isn't yeah, it? and the school kids have been actively involved in every stage it. of its evolution in fact yeah. the school's had an input and there's now those kids feel a connection to it they understand what it's for and how, what, what's going on with it and how it works so yeah I thought I, the project work Welsh Baccalaureate project work was really fantastic because yeah. it, it completed that cycle as you said and, um, and I think it's brought us to a point now where we're really we've got the summer to think about first of September is the beginning of year three mm-hmm. so we've kind of we're at that kind of transition review place. transition place going into year three mm. so be good to see how it pans out yeah I'm, I'm, I'm really hopeful and I think we've not cracked it but I think we've created a crack I think we've created a real opportunity that we could now try and plug into yeah. which is I, I think we quite seamlessly have linked into the Welsh Back programme yeah seems like a good way to go doesn't it yeah and with that we've been able to create real changes within the school and real changes within the community mm-hmm. and create a, a method of communicating and talking about that through the community meetings and, and the podcast yeah. so it's quite a good little set of Outcomes. Of outcomes. Yeah. So, yeah. And next Thursday, we will be back in the Cross Keys uh, Thursday evening uh, talking about um, what comes next. <laughs> I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>